Oh, thank you very much. Cheers, Steve. That's lovely, guys. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Lovely to be here. Thank you very much. It's nice to be back in the UK. I've just come back from the America, everyone. Yeah, I was over there hosting the World Tea Drinking Competition. Yeah, and I'll let you know in on a secret. The winner was a, a Native American lady, right? She's a, a yeah, an Indian squaw called Lion Cow, and she yeah. No, she was, and she drunk in two hours six thousand cups of tea. I know that's amazing, it's brilliant, and she won the competition. That's fantastic. But some tragedy has struck, unfortunately, everybody. As this morning, she was found dead in her own teepee. But. It's tragic, isn't it? And I know what you're thinking. You're looking up here and looking at me and thinking, look at that, it's like an oversized Kit Kat. I know, I'm sorry. I, those people at Pelican have got a hell of a sales pitch, haven't they? And I tell you, they have, haven't they? If you're looking at a suit, honestly, look, I do look like a big Kit Kat. Hello, darling, right? How do you fancy I'm wrapping a four-finger treat? Hey, hey, no, anyway, it's... Oh, but ladies and gentlemen, if any of you are thinking to drink lots of tea, or like me, last night, I had lots to drink here last night. And ladies and gentlemen, don't drink too much. Honestly, I woke up this morning with such an awful woman. And, <laughs> on, no, or, honestly, she was hideous. And she had cross eyes, and it was terrible. Uh, apparently, she was seeing me on the side. Yeah, and, <laughs> and I've had no luck with the girlfriends either, everybody. Come on. Aww. Yeah. One of my girlfriends, she, she entered a drinking competition. She entered the Red Bull National Drinking Competition and she drunk in half an hour 375 tins of Red Bull. God, she was so happy about winning the competition. She's all excited and she, she fell on the train lines and got run over by a steam train at Bodmin Railway, everyone. Yeah, she was chuffed to bits, though. Um, but... <laughs> you may as well laugh, mate. I'm staying on. Yeah, all right. And... Uh, you think that's bad? I had another girlfriend, everybody. Lovely girl from Holland. Yeah. And, and she worked, right? Lovely girl from Holland worked in an inflatable shoe factory. And we were going out for about three weeks until she popped her clogs. But um, <laughs> she's the first girl to go down on me in public. It was great. And, uh, but, she, yeah. but I've had some, some good news today, everybody. My mum has just got a new job, everyone. Yeah, she, she rung me up. She said she got a new, new job at the bowling centre. I said, 10 pins? She said, no, it's permanent. And, <laughs> and I, I, I took my, my grandparents to there, to the bowling alley. Now, my grandparents had never had a go at bowling before. And I had to explain them the rules, that there's like the line and the alley and the gutter either side, 10 pins. You have two goes to knock them all over. My granddad went first. He stepped right up and he rolled the ball down and he knocked all 10 pins over. He's excited, but he clearly put his foot right over the line. And my grand, she noticed, she said, you're a foot in front. He said, what did you call me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Started around. And <laughs> so I won't be taking them again. But, and some other news. I'm here, obviously, ladies and gentlemen, toting for work today because I've had to give up my day job. Yeah, I, I used to work in a helium factory, but I had to give it up. I'm not being spoken to in that tone of voice. And it's true. And then I started in the summer, back down in Cornwall, I started up my own business doing colonic irrigation. But the hosepipe ban, that finished us, really. So, uh, yeah. But instead, then I went on holiday, everybody. Now, I like going on holiday. I'm sure everybody here likes going on holiday. But the worst bit about going abroad even though I love it, is the flying. Now, I'm scared of flying. Anybody scared of flying? Yeah? Work with me, guys. Anybody here just ever seen a plane? Yeah, lovely. Okay. You walk in an airport, the first thing you see is a big sign saying terminal. Now, that frightened me to start with. And I walked in. I went on holiday, everybody, with my girlfriend at the time. Yeah. You've obviously seen her. All right. Um... She was ugly as well, everyone. Honestly, hideous. I mean, she was all right at the top. It's as you work your way down. She just seemed to get wider. And what, yeah, there's fellas here laughing. You've met a girl like this, haven't you, met? Honestly, she's like a skittle. On a massive bum. Her pants are labelled Mark F. That's one above a marquee. That is. It's, it's big, isn't it? 
She's the only girl I know had to put her in a belt with a boomerang, you know, blah, 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 blah. you're like, ah, big girl, right? <laughs> Laughing it up, mate. Every time I climb on at night, my ears pop. It wasn't funny, right? And, <laughs> and she got stopped at customs. They thought she was smuggling a hundred pound of crack. It weren't far off, but <laughs> they... You go in there with, like, to go to the airport, first of all, you take all your luggage. Now, I don't know about you ladies in here, but I seem to find that all the ladies I go out with pack everything she got everything she got like one bag full of shoes because she got that phrase what's that phrase if the shoe fits no buy a pair in every color not wear it no she she has hundreds of shoes and i said look at all these cases we're only going for a week 15 of them what's in there shoes i went right shoes are in what's in that one she went that's got makeup i went well fair enough you need that and <laughs> What about that one there? What's that got in it? She said, that's got underwear. I said, well, that's why that one's so big. All right, and uh, all these other bags, and we're queuing here. I wish you I wish you packed the television. She said, so do I. The tickets and passports are on top of it. Yeah, I had... I know, I had to go home and get them. Then we get back, and we get on the plane. You've all done this, haven't you? You walk down with all your luggage, and you go and give it to the lady from Thunderbirds. Have you seen her? And she looked at me with that disdain look on her face. And I walked up and gave her all my luggage. And I went, here, we're going to Spain. She went, fuck you. There's no need for that. There's kids here, I said. She said, no, Spain, the far queue. I went, yeah, all right, sorry, okay. And <laughs> but then I went down on the ramp, got on the plane. Now, the first thing you've got to do is put all your luggage in the overhead compartment. Then you settle down. And I'm sitting there in my seat, we take off, and what happens then? Is the pilot come on the aircraft to reassure you it's going to be a safe flight. And I'm scared of flying, and he says something like, I'm going to reassure you it'll be a safe flight today. Well, why? What happened yesterday? <laughs> it makes me nervous enough as it is. And I notice it's the same pilot. Crikey, it's dangerous over here. <laughs> oh, look, 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 hang on, I haven't done this since a kid. Right, okay, no. <laughs> I notice when you get on the plane, it's the same pilot on every plane. Have you noticed that, everyone? He's, got the, he's always got a posh voice. He's always got a stutter. He's stammer and hang on to his word. In fact, he got the same name every time. He's always called Captain Speaking. <laughs> Isn't he? He is? You laugh. Next flight you're on, you'll think of me, right? You're sitting there. You take off, on he comes, bing bong. Good afternoon, passengers, Captain speaking. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the pirate Gatwick flying out toward a destination over in Spain. I'd like to inform you now, we're climbing to our altitude around 35,000 feet, cruising at the steady speed around 300 miles an hour. <laughs> the skies out look clear, there should be no turbulence during our flight. If you'd like to sit back now, your cabin crew. We'll be through shortly with all your in-flight entertainment and refreshments. <laughs> so if you'd like to sit back now and enjoy your flight, we're cruising steadily to our destination over in... Oh, my God! <laughs> yeah. Hang on a minute. N nobody laughed on the flight. We're all... S yeah. Say about a Kit Kat. Honestly, I. We took a break for about 30 seconds, but it felt like about three hours. We're sitting there wondering what the f what happened in the flight deck, right? Love you. And but he came back. Bing bong. Good afternoon, passengers. Captain speaking again. <laughs> Second chance to get that. If you, no. Anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, do apologize for my uh, sudden outburst during my announcements, but my co-pilot, he's rather clumsy, and he just spilled a cup of scalding hot coffee <laughs> all over my lap. Yeah, then he said, you ought to see the state of the front of my trousers. I said, you ought to see the state of the back of mine, honestly, because he... <laughs> yeah. But then... <laughs> I'm glad we weren't flying upside down, love. It would have run at me collar. Honestly, and it... We, but we pitched down and landed. So we get off the flight. The first thing you want to do on holiday, everybody, is to go and get a drink. A bit like coming here, isn't it? We want to have a drink. 
And I went in there and I thought, I'm in Spain. I'll go and get a pint. She can get the luggage, right? Because it's all hers anyway. So off I went to find a... I went right in this first bar. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of you tonight out there looking up here might look at me and think, he's a bit thick. Stop laughing. You couldn't be wronger, right? Because... What? I aren't thick. I learnt right proper up school what I need to learn. And I did. And ladies and gentlemen, I learnt to speak many languages. Yeah, I'm multilingual. You could say I'm a cunning linguist. Yeah. No. I can get my tongue around any of them. I'm there, right? So, the, any language. And I went in this bar in Spain, and I ordered my drink in the man's native language to make him feel at home. It's in perfect Spanglish. I walked up, right, and I went like this. I went, mm -hmm. I know what I'm talking about. Pay attention, you'll learn something if you ever go to Spain. I walked in, I went, mm -hmm. Barmano Pantalagaro, please, oh. <laughs> now, for the ones out there that aren't fluent, that means Barman Pantalagaro, please, in Spanglish. And he understood, he picked up the glass. He put it under the pump, he pulled the lever. Now, the first pint of the holiday, fellas, is the best. Honestly, he's filling up, it's ice cold amber nectar, super chilled. Bubbles rising through the glass, condensation around the outside is climbing. And the head gets to the top, a little dribble runs over the edge. <laughs> I couldn't wait. I leaned over to grab this drink. As I leaned over the bar like this, something terrible happened to everyone. In this bar in Spain, I'm leaning over the bar, and from nowhere, a bloke, yes, yeah, a bloke, he got up and he walked straight up behind me, and with his hand, he grabbed me on my bum. Ah. Well, I didn't do that. He's a bloke. I'm a bloke. I'm not used to that sort of thing. It's not, he went up, he went, I went, oi, what the, f oh, no, no. I did it in Spanglish. I went, hero, mateo, bugger off, oh. I said, not like that, oh, go on, oh, and I shoot him off. Shoo, oh. As, yeah, as he's, he's walking out the exit, he's, I'm watching him go, oh, right, and, I'm looking that way, and then another bloke, a different bloke, did exactly the same while I'm looking that way. He blindsided me. I'm looking that way, and he walked straight up, all prepared again, four fingers, straight up a chop. I went, here, hang on a minute, oh. Leave my ass so alone, oh. Yeah. I even sent him home. I said, go, oh, homo. Yeah. And... And I'm getting upset, right? upset -o. And I, I went to tell the barman off. I said, here, barman-o. So what sort of establishment -o are you running, hero? And he looked at me, he went, senor. He said, this is a tapas bar. <laughs> <laughs> tapas. Blimey. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thanks. I was going to do a song, but I haven't got time, everyone. So I, I'm sorry, I was. I was going to sing a beautiful song called How Can I Tell You I Love You When I Can't Even Breathe Down Here. But I can't do it now. So do, do you know it, boys? Can we? No, all right. got to go. Ladies and gentlemen, for me, Jack Lamble, have a fantastic night. Good night. God bless. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jack Lamville! Check about Jack.